This section talks about the legal and ethical issues pertaining to information provision. By the end of this session, students are expected to be able to tease out some of the critical, legal, and ethical issues and how they hinder or enhance information services. Be acquainted with some intellectual property laws in information provision. They should also show an understanding of copyright and its application in information provision, especially in Ghana. The key topics to be covered in this session are as follows. Ethics and legalities, laws and ethics of information services, plagiarism and citation, ethical dilemmas in information provision, ethics and legalities. When we talk about legal issues, legal issues relate to issues regarding the laws of a country or geographical region. Laws are rules that mandate or prohibit certain societal behavior. Ethics can be defined as socially acceptable behaviors based on cultural values or customs of a particular group of people. In this sense, every profession, in this case librarianship, has its own code of ethics or conduct. This dictates what is acceptable or otherwise among librarians in the provision of information. Can you tell me some of the code of conduct in other professions apart from librarianship? We have code of conduct for doctors, profession. Doctors are not supposed to give information, health information about their patient to a third party unless there's agreement from the patient. The same applies to bankers. They are not supposed to give information about somebody's financial status to a third party. It's part of their code of ethics or their code of conduct. Legal and ethical issue. Unlike ethics, laws or legalities carry sanctions of a governing authority. Ethics do not necessarily carry sanctions. So they are not legally enforced, yet laws are drawn from ethics in most cases. How do ethics and legality affect information services? The laws of a particular jurisdiction and the ethics of information provision has an enormous effect on the provision of information. In this course, legal and ethical issues regarding intellectual freedom, intellectual property will be discussed. Some of the legal issues that guide information services in the 21st century may include, we have the copyright, we have the plagiarism, and then we have the fair use. We just spoke about the copyright as one of the challenges in information provision. So what is copyright? We are saying that it's a basic right which enables creators of literary and artistic works such as writers, artists, musicians, software developers, etc., to receive recognition for their works as authors and also financial rewards for their creative works. Copyright may also be referred to ownership vested in the creator or intellectual property by law and for which he or she gets paid duly for the inventiveness of the imagination expended. Intellectual property may be in the form of book, article, piece of music, film, theater production, etc. How do we avoid copyright infringement? The best way is to obtain permission from the author before you, you photocopy a piece of work. So to the principle of fair use. What is the fair use doctrine? It says that parts of a piece of information can be photocopied if it is going to be used for study, for research, and for lecture. Implication of copyright. The implication of copyright from information provision and use are that one cannot use in parts or in whole the work another person without his or her permission, without paying him or her anything for using his or her original creation. Failure to abide by the copyright law is considered a serious crime that is punishable by stiff fines or improvement or to both. But as students, we are lucky to have the fair use doctrine, which permits us to reproduce or copyright material for a limited purpose, as I told you already, for teaching, for studying, 
etc. So we are not supposed to go and photocopy or reproduce a material from cover to cover, as we do. So a lot of us are infringing on the copyright law. Because what do we do? If you go to a photocopier, people go to a library, pick a book, they turn it to a photocopier, please reproduce it for me from cover to cover. What I'm telling you today is that you are what, infringing on the copyright law. Penalty for copyright offense. A person who infringes a right protected under this act commits an offense and is liable on some conviction to a fine. These are some of the penalty units. The penalty units refer to such units established by the fines by at 2000 at 572. The monetary value of a penalty unit stands at 12 cities. One penalty unit, 12 cities, therefore 1,000 penalty units will be what? 12,000. Violation under the Copyright Act are punished by a fine up to 1,000 penalty units. Copyright Law of Ghana, Act number 690. As projected, the library is mentioned under the third section, permitted uses of copyright, subsidy 21, permitted uses of copyright work by library and archives as follows. A library and archive with activity that are not for gain may, without the authorization of the author of copyright, make a single copy of the work by reprographic reproduction. So even a library can put copy a single copy. So as I told you, you shouldn't infringe on the copyright law. Our next topic or subtopic is plagiarism. What is plagiarism? It is passing of someone else's work, either intentionally or unintentionally, as your own, for own profit or benefit. Different authors have suggested a number of types of plagiarism. In this session, we will concern ourselves with the types of plagiarism as specified in the plagiarism spectrum by turning it in. We have the clone, the CTLC, find, replace, remix, recycle. This one, the first one, the clone is submitting another person's work, word for word, as one's own, just as you've been doing. I've told you when we did information seeking behavior, that some of you, your seeking behavior is to just ask a type of friend and ask the friend, have you done it? Then you just pick it and go and photocopy. You are the first one, the clone, submitting another person's work word for word as one's own. The control C or the CTRLC contains significant portions of text from a single source without alterations. Sometimes when you are giving assignments, you just go on the net, you pick somebody's work, a whole paragraph, a whole page, you just pick it and you take it at yours. What you are saying that it falls under the plagiarism, you are plagiarizing somebody's work. The third one is fine, replace, changing keywords and phrases by retaining the essential content or the idea. Sometimes students, we think when we change the words, then we are not plagiarizing. You have, because the original idea is not yours. Sometimes what do you see? A paragraph starts with according to. Then you will do it and then you bring the person's name at the bottom. What you are saying is that you are also what? Plagiarize because the original idea is not yours. Remix, that's the fourth one. Paraphrasing from multiple sources made to fit together. You are plagiarizing, it's a form of plagiarizing or plagiarized work. Sometimes when you think we paraphrase, we are okay. No, when you paraphrase, you are still plagiarized. As I said, the idea that you are putting up is not your idea. You pick it from someone's. Recycling is the fifth one. Borrows generously from the writer's previous work without citation. It's also an offense. That idea is not yours. You need to acknowledge where it is coming from. We have a lot, the hybrid, the mashup, the 404 error, aggregator, retweet, etc. How do we avoid plagiarism? Simple, by citing or by acknowledging. That is referencing. A citation is both an acknowledgement 
in a signpost. You are acquainting the person and you are directing others who will read your work from where you get the information from. That is why it is a signpost. As an acknowledgement, citation give credit where credit is due. As a signpost, it shows the location of the source. Ethical issues in information provision. Ethics are professional standards of conduct. There are many ethical issues that librarians must deal with when providing information in libraries. Librarians, academic and public, have a responsibility to make sure that the information they are given is accurate and reliable and that they are providing this information equally to all members of the population. What we are saying is this. You don't have to be biased in providing information. It is one of our ethics. You shouldn't be biased. Don't look at race. Don't look at ethnic, ethnic groups. Don't look at age. You should provide for everyone who is an authorized user of your information center. The IFLA Code of Ethics for Librarians highlights the following areas. Access to information, responsibilities towards individual and society, privacy, secrecy, and transparency, open access and intellectual property, neutrality, personal integrity and professional skills, colleague and employee employer relationship. I'll take a couple. Talk about privacy. We are saying that as information provider, you shouldn't tell others of somebody's request or information needs. Whatever transfer between you and the user should stay between the two of you. We should be open. We should, we should, we should give access to the information, regardless of the person involved. If the person is an authorized user of the center, we need to provide access to the information to that individual. Smith also highlighted the following areas for the information provider. Quality of service, which we've talked about. Equity of service, conflict of interest, confidentiality, personal ethics, professional code of conduct. Sometimes, conflict of interest. The material is there. I remember a situation where an information provider found in a situation where there's a material that a lecturer has asked students to come for. And it is only one material. And when the students start coming, the provider asks the student in an academic setting, asks the student, what class is that, level 300? And the lecturer's son is also in level 300, doing the, offering the same course. So what the woman does is that, just pick the book and then head it for the son. In this scenario, there's a what? Conflict of interest. Ethical dilemma in information provision. Recently, a new dilemma has surfaced. Librarians now question whether or not to provide information that could be potentially harmful to the requester or the society as a whole. Special libraries are not faced with this type of dilemma because they generally serve smaller groups that have a professional organization association with the library. What this means is that if we are supposed to serve our users, we should make information accessible to our users. And then that piece of information has been censored politically. As the information provider, you are in the dilemma. Do you have to give it out or not? But we are saying that this pertaining to public or academic libraries. Special libraries do not face such problems. In conclusion, as a information provider, you are expected to one, understand current legal environment that you serve. You should stay current with laws and regulation regarding information provision and use. You should also watch for new legal or ethical issues that emerges concerning information provision and use. You have this activity to perform. In the Copyright Act of Ghana, the library is mentioned under the text section that is permitted uses of copyright, subsection 21. The subsection contains six items, out of which two were discussed in this class section. Find out the other four and discuss briefly how each of the six items and the subsection affect information services provision. Thank you.